Hello again everyone from Tokyo, Japan and welcome back to Japan Vintage Camera. Uh, Happy New Year to everyone. This is my first video of uh, 2021. I hope 2021 turns out to be a better year than 2020, though of course it seems, seems to be off to kind of a, a rocky start. Uh, New Year's here in Japan was a pretty typical, a little less traffic than uh, usual for uh, this time of year. A New Year's holiday is when a lot of people decide to go home, or when they when they usually go home to visit their relatives in different parts of the country. Uh, though most of the people seem to live here in Tokyo, it seems uh, pretty much everyone in Tokyo has relatives who live elsewhere. So it's quite a, a busy time for travel. Uh, a lot of shops and stores and such are closed. Banks are closed. Uh, it's been a little bit more difficult for me to uh, get cameras shipped out as uh, the shipping company I normally use. And unfortunately, due to the pandemic, I don't have a lot of options for shipping companies, but uh, they were closed for five days. Uh, luckily, most of the packages which I needed to get out got out yesterday, and the rest of them should be out tomorrow. So for those of you who are uh, waiting for cameras, ones you've ordered from me, uh, please be patient. Uh, they will arrive soon. Uh, today's video is going to be another instructional video, and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to, uh, I guess, do a quick refresh or a simple overhaul of a Yashica Electro 35 GX rangefinder camera. Now these cameras were last produced in the mid 1970s, so uh, any example you go, you come across is going to be 40 odd years old and probably hasn't been used in a long time. So in order to get the best possible results out of it, you're going to have to clean it up a little bit and get it into working order. Uh, common problems that these cameras have from sitting for so long. Uh, the first problem is the light seals are usually dry rotted. And if they aren't dry rotted, they've kind of melted down into a kind of gluey, sticky substance. Uh, either way, they, they usually have to be replaced. Uh, another thing which usually happens over time is the viewfinder and rangefinder gets a little bit hazy and dirty and is a little bit difficult to see through and to focus with properly. Another problem that these cameras have is that they can accumulate lens, uh, I guess, dust or fungus on the inside of the lens. So all these things have to be cleaned out. Uh, fortunately, this work isn't very difficult and doesn't take a lot in the way of tools or expertise. And I'll be uh, showing you the different steps uh, you need to take in order to refresh your Electro 35 GX. So. Uh, to do this job, you need a few tools. Uh, the first tool you need is a small Phillips head screwdriver, like the one I'm showing here. Another tool is a pointed lens spanner. So of course not everyone can get a pointed lens spanner. They don't sell these everywhere. But uh, if you don't have one uh, in a pinch, you can use a pair of old needle nose pliers, uh, like the kind they sell in sporting goods stores for fishing or auto parts stores or things like that. And you can file or grind down the tips until they have uh, reasonably sharp points on them. Uh, these are the two important tools you will need. Uh, other tools which I, I use uh, for this job are a pair of regular pliers uh, with flat tips. Uh, I have a can of compressed air, or I can use a rubber blow bottle type thing. Anything which I can blow away dust with. Uh, some lens cleaning fluid. Uh, assortment of uh, cotton swabs. Uh, these are pure cotton swabs. Uh, I get the best results from pure cotton. Uh, a little lighter fluid uh, comes in handy for this job. Uh, some contact cement, uh, pretty much any kind of contact cement. And uh, it's a good idea to have batteries for the camera. Now these cameras were originally uh, designed to use a large one and a half volt mercury batteries used together giving you three volts of current. I'm using uh, LR44 batteries which are inserted into these uh, uh, simple adapters. Uh, there are different options available for batteries when you're using one of these cameras. Uh, what you really need is you just need three volts of power to operate the meter and electronic shutter. And there are a couple of ways you can do it. You can use these uh, battery adapters like so, or uh, you can take your uh, batteries like this and LR44 batteries and stack them together in series and then 
uh, fit them in one side of the battery compartment and then use a piece of metal foil or a, a nut or something which uh, fits uh, to short the two contacts in here. Just make sure that you have the correct polarity. That is that the batteries are pointing the right way, uh, plus and minus uh, to the right sides. Uh, taking a look at this camera, this one is in, in fairly decent condition. Uh, it has some scratches and marks to the paint, but there don't seem to be any uh, major dents or issues. Uh, the light seals are a little bit uh, dry rotted uh, and will have to be replaced. I don't see any fungus or anything in the lens and it seems fairly clear of uh, uh, haze. Uh, the viewfinder glass is not pushed in. That's a common problem with these cameras. It's just a simple piece of glass which is glued inside and sometimes through aggressive cleaning it gets pushed in and knocked loose. Uh, another common problem with this, these cameras, and this one seems to have it, is the little glass window which covers the film counter is pushed in. So it's probably sitting somewhere inside the top of the camera. So, anyway. Uh, we'll go ahead and get started with the repair and the first thing we're going to do is get to work uh, cleaning and adjusting the viewfinder and rangefinder. So we'll go ahead and start on that in just a moment. All right, so uh, to get started on uh, cleaning the viewfinder and rangefinder, we have to remove the top cover. And fortunately, that's not a very difficult task with the Ashika GX. It's easier than uh, the job it is on the earlier Electro 35 cameras. The first thing we have to do is remove the nut here. Um, this one, you, I'm able to remove with my thumb. I'm just pushing down and turning, and it's coming loose. Uh, if it won't come loose under your thumb, you can use a pointed spanner like this one here. Put the uh, tips inside the uh, holes on the nut or you can use a pair of tweezers with sharp points. Just spread them apart and put the points in there and give it a twist to the left. So uh, first the, the screw comes off the top. There's compression washer under that. You can lift off the arm. Uh, one thing that these GX cameras have that the other Electro 35s don't is this little brass bushing here. So you have to be careful not to misplace that. And then under here is a spacer with a hole at the 7 o'clock position. Uh, as you're standing behind the camera, it's the 7 o'clock position. Next thing we have to do is remove the uh, film rewind knob. So I'll go ahead and lift it up and pull open the uh, film door. Uh, there's a fork here on this side. I'll go ahead and put the screwdriver between the fork and twist the knob leftwards and then take it all the way off. Okay, there are two more things we need to do to take off the top cover. We need to remove the Phillips screw located right here. And there's a nut that goes around the winding shaft here. I'll use my pointed spanner. You can use a pair of tweezers or even a screwdriver if you're careful to try and pry it uh, loose counterclockwise. After all that is done, the top cover should lift off. Uh, sometimes it lifts off easily, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes glue from the leather in the front uh, gets underneath the top cover on the front and you kind of have to push it up with your thumbs to get it off. Now when you lift the top cover off, be careful that you don't pull it too far because there are an assortment of wires here which are connected to the hot shoe on the top cover of the camera and also to the PC sync socket on the other side of the top cover. So I want to try and find the window for the uh, film counter. Let me go ahead and take a look here, see if I can find it. Okay. Oh, here it is. Okay, so that's quite easy. The very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to glue this back into place. I want to do this first because uh, it'll give it time to dry while I'm putting working on the rest of the uh, viewfinder assembly on the top here. So I'll go ahead and put a little bit of glue, contact cement. Like so. Uh, Always use the minimal amount of glue you need. Never use too much glue. 
Uh, too much glue can make a mess, it can make the job harder, and on top of that, uh, one day someone might need to work on the camera again, and when things are glued too much into place, sometimes they are hard to remove. Uh, another issue with using too much glue on the inside of the camera, sometimes the glue, the solvent inside, when it dries, and the glue dries, the solvent evaporates, it can leave haze on the glass. You don't want to leave any haze on the glass inside of uh, your camera. So what I want to do next, the first thing is clean out the inside of this glass lens on the front of the uh, viewfinder. So I'll take my cotton swab, wet it a little bit, and just wipe horizontally. Uh, this one's quite clean, it doesn't have much in the way of haze. Okay, that looks nice and clean there. Uh, I'll go ahead and lift off this dust cover and clean off the front of the viewfinder window. I have a lamp behind me and I have one off to my side and by Looking at a reflection of the lamp on the glass, I can see very well if I have left any haze or dust or anything on the glass. Once again, I'm being very careful where I, where I set the top cover. I don't want to stretch the wires and break them off because I don't want to have to give a soldering demonstration in this video in addition to the uh, other repairs. Uh, the next thing I want to do is clean the inside of the glass. And what I want to do to uh, make the job a little easier is squeeze the cotton swabs flat with these pliers. And that's pretty much the only thing I'm going to do with these with these pliers for this job, at least I hope. Uh, if you squeeze them flat, that allows you to get uh, into the corners and such and not leave any uh, dust or haze or stuff on the inside. Make sure to wipe it down really good. As I've said before, when you're using cotton swabs uh, to clean glass, when you first start wiping, it tends to leave, uh, I guess, a thin film of uh, cotton dust. And as you continue wiping, the, the film comes off and leans, leaves the clean glass underneath. But you have to rub it for a few moments to uh, uh, get that haze off. Uh, this is a later model. The Yashica GX was the last of uh, the the quality Electro 35 rangefinder cameras which Yashica made. And it has the improved uh, beam splitting mirror which is pretty much impervious to uh, being rubbed away or damaged from cleaning. Uh, when I get these cameras and they're unrepairable, unrepairable which uh, unfortunately some of them are, uh, one thing I always salvage is the beam splitting mirrors because they are a good upgrade for other rangefinder cameras. They're quite easy to uh, trim or modify to fit other cameras. And so I've I've cleaned the the front element. I've cleaned the beam splitting mirror. The next thing I want to clean is the inside of the eyepiece mirror. And to do that, I bend over the cotton swab 90 degrees like that and that allows me to kind of get around behind corners and things like that. Okay, that's nice and clean and I can also use this bent like this to clean the rangefinder mirror over here on the right side. Okay, another thing I want to do is clean uh, this mirror and this small lens uh, behind it. This is the mirror which projects the frame lines uh, from the, the frame line mask here, reflects off this mirror and goes through this lens and is reflected on this mirror here. And uh, the frame lines are what you use when you are composing your image. So. Uh, I want those to be clean and I want this lens here to be clean because that improves the rangefinder contrast. So I'll go ahead and kind of squeeze this really flat so it fits in there. And just go up and down the 
the sides and on the back. And in the inside of this lens. Okay. And then uh, the reflecting mirror itself. Uh, to be able to reach in here, you have to focus the lens to the close focus distance, or as like here says like uh, uh, 2.6 feet, and that moves this little lens more toward the front and gives you room to get the cotton swab behind it. Once I have everything clean, I I, I blow out the dust. Uh, when you are adjusting the rangefinder on these cameras, now is a good time to adjust it more easily when you have the top cover off. And there are two places where you adjust the rangefinder. Uh, first, there is a screw right here, right in the center, which is located right underneath uh, the flash hot shoe here. Uh, the screw has a plus on the head, uh, like a cross, and you use a slot screwdriver, and it's shaped like a plus so you can access it more easily. This is for doing the horizontal adjustment or the infinity adjustment. So if the horizontal adjustment is off, you turn the screw one way or the other until it's properly lined up. For the vertical adjustment, there's a small screw located right here behind uh, the rangefinder mirror. So uh, you, you can easily do the horizontal adjustment with the top cover on. You just have to slide this black dust cover off of the hot shoe. You lift it up here and then slide it back and there's an access hole underneath. For the vertical adjustment, you have to remove the top cover in order to reach it. On the Yashica Electro 35, they have a plastic cover which you can remove from the back here and then uh, that allows you to access it without removing the top cover. But moving the top cover on the GX isn't all that difficult, so it's not too big of a, a deal. So now that I've got it cleaned out, I've blown the dust out of it, I'll replace this uh, dust shield on the top with a, a little bit of contact cement. And once again, just a tiny bit. And drop this on like so. Okay. All right. So uh, the next thing we're going to do is replace the top cover. And there are a couple of things you want to watch for. First, there's a spring here uh, that you can see under the tip of the screwdriver that has to go all the way around this brass plunger here. If the spring does it, it goes to one side or the other. Uh, the shutter is not going to actuate right, so you have to make sure that it is set straight down. You can just see it as you put on the top cover. And then just slide on the top cover and set it down. Uh, sometimes uh, the switch for the battery check lamp protrudes more farther uh, than on some other cameras, or too far that you can't push the top cover down. It only comes down about that far and it won't come down any farther. Uh, in order to get it to come down, you'll have to pry up just a little bit right here. Just a tiny bit is all you need until it slides down. And uh, the top cover fits nice and flush. Uh, what I'll do next is I'll take the little nut here under the winding lever and I'll put it on. Like so. And then I'll put the Phillips screw on the other side like so. Uh, tighten this up with the lens spanner. I'm going to be careful not to touch this window here because I don't want it to fall inside again. I'll replace the uh, film rewind knob and pull up and pop open the door. Put the screwdriver between the forks, tighten it down. Then I'll go ahead and uh, put this spacer here with the hole at the 7 o'clock position. Then a little brass washer or spacer. Then uh, the film rewind arm. Compression washer. And then the nut itself. And we have a little spacer here. So I believe that was, this camera came fitted with a spacer or washer under the nut. I'll go ahead and 
replace that before I forget about it. Don't, they don't always have these washers. Sometimes they have them, sometimes they don't. Uh, usually there's a washer which fits under the rewind knob. This one didn't have one. If it does have a washer, make sure not to lose it because when you turn the knob it'll probably grind or make noise without the washer. Okay, once again, the spacer, the bushing, the winding lever, compression washer, and then the cap screw. Uh, these are made of brass and can be kind of easy to break, so be careful not to over tighten them. I just get them a little bit snug. You don't have to worry about them coming loose. All right, anyway, uh, that's it. The viewfinder rangefinder is nice and clean and clear and uh, much easier to use than it was before. It wasn't especially dirty on this particular camera, but it's much cleaner now. So we're gonna go ahead and take a break for a few minutes. And after that, I'm going to show you how to clean out the insides of the lens elements. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, get started on cleaning out the lens elements. Uh, the Yashica lenses are very well made, and the later lenses are even better made than the earlier versions. Uh, the GX is a very late model uh, camera, which has very durable coatings. Uh, you'll sometimes find these cameras which have uh, uh, fungus, sometimes really heavy fungus, on the insides of the glass. Uh, in 9 out of 10 times, all you have to do is just clean off the fungus with uh, lens cleaning fluid, and there won't be any etching or any uh, harm to the glass. That's a wonderful thing about these cameras compared to like the uh, uh, Canon uh, Canonet QL17, which has a similar lens, but which is uh, uh, very weak when it comes to fungus and is very easily etched in haze. So the, the quality of the glass in the Ashika cameras is much higher than the Canon of uh, of the same period. So what I want to do first is apply a little bit of uh, lighter fluid to uh, the filter ring, and that'll make it easier to remove uh, the I guess lens plate retaining ring. There's a, a aluminum ring that holds all this on and there are two notches uh, on either side and I use my lens spanner. Uh, sometimes you can get away with uh, just using a screwdriver. I'll try that first here and I just find the notch and give it a push. Okay. And this one is coming out with just using the screwdriver. I don't even need the, the lens spanner for this. So I'll just twist it out like so. Okay, I'll take it the rest of the way off with my thumb. Uh, I can see this camera's been cleaned out before. There's some tool marks on the retaining ring, but no damage. I'll go ahead and set that in a safe place. Next thing I'm going to do is turn the camera like this, and uh, the nameplate and light meter baffle will drop out like so. The next thing we need to do is remove the uh, front lens element. Now you uh, I'll use my lens spanner for that, but you can also use, uh, as I said before, a pair of needle nose pliers with uh, sharp points. There are notches here on either side of the lens. Oh, this one's kind of loose. That's a good thing. And just go ahead and turn it out like so. One thing that uh, you often find on these old Yashikas is when you uh, take off uh, the nameplate here, and you can see the light meter cell here. You can kind of see that it's a translucent plastic, and you can see the, the cell element underneath the plastic. But sometimes these get full of this really kind of odd chalky substance, and it kind of clogs up everything and blocks out the light, and can make the uh, light meter very inaccurate. Uh, what you have to do to remove it is simply carefully scrape it out with a screwdriver. And you can get most of it out and, until you get down to the plastic which is covering the lens element. It's a fairly hard optical plastic which protects it. And uh, 
I use a screwdriver with a very flat and very sharp point to remove it and then I will clean it with a cotton swab and lens cleaning fluid and I can usually get it clean enough to where the, the meter is operating within spec. But that is a problem which I find on these uh, Yashica Electro 35 GX cameras. It's not a fatal problem, uh, but it does require a bit more work. And sometimes it, you, the, the haze accumulates all the way out to here. It's like something inside there, a plastic or whatever, has a chemical reaction and turns into some kind of white foam and then it hardens over the years. So, lens element is removed and it's quite easy now to clean the back of the, the front lens element, but uh, we need to clean out the inside of the rear lens element as well. So, what we need to do next is there are three screws here which hold on the lens filtering and I'm going to go ahead and remove these. And the ring pops off like so. Uh, I used to have a pretty large stock of these uh, rings, extra ones, to replace dented cameras, ones which were dented, but uh, I've used them all up now, I'm so unfortunately I don't have any more spares. Next thing we have to do is lift out this uh, silver ring here, and this is what uh, you use to adjust the film speed in the camera. And the last thing to do is lift out the aperture ring here, and this is the pin which engages the lever to open and close the aperture blades. Next thing I want to do is charge the shutter and if you look right here there's a, a coil, there's a, a joint here and then there's kind of a catch with a lever which is engaged by the catch. What I want to do is depress the shutter while holding this lever with my thumb and what that will do is it will prevent the shutter from uh, closing. And I can hold the shutter open and with the shutter held open I can uh, clean out the rear lens element. So I'll go ahead and charge that up again. I'll get my uh, cotton swab ready, put a little bit of uh, lens cleaning fluid, and uh, try it again. Didn't catch it very well that time. Okay, and that's enough to work. If the aperture is not open wide enough to get the cotton swab in there, uh, you can kind of see the right here. I don't know if you can see it in the, on the screen so well, but I it, there's a little fork here, and I can move it. If I move it to the top, that closes the shutter. If I pull it down toward the middle of the lens, that opens. Excuse me, the aperture, not the shutter. Okay, and I'll go ahead and open it again and blow out any dust that might be in there and then let it close. All right, and now it's time to put the uh, front of the camera back together. So I'm going to take the aperture ring here and find this pin. And I'll go ahead and push it into between the forks on the aperture ring. And I'm going to go to the other side here. I'm going to pull this spring over to the side so it engages the detents here on the ring. As you can see, it's working smoothly. Uh, it's a good idea sometimes to add a little bit of oil here to the edges to make the, the ring easier to turn. Once this is in, I replace the film speed selector ring. You can see the numbers here on the bottom. This uh, pin here goes through the slot and I just make sure that it sits nice and flush all the way around. And then after that is in I can replace the filtering assembly. Magnetic screwdriver comes in handy here. screw. Uh, 
All right, and then once again, I blow off any dust. All right. And I want to clean the inside of the front element. On uh, some of these front elements, you'll find fungus, which has gotten between uh, the glass and the front. You can sometimes see it around the edge here. Uh, you can remove this retaining ring from the, the lens element and separate it and take the front element out to clean it, but it's kind of a difficult job because this ring is glued on. So what I do is, I, if I, I do have to clean the inside of it, I'll apply some uh, lacquer thinner and let it sit for maybe 20 minutes or so, and then I will uh, use a tool to hold the back of the lens element, and then I will simply turn this off with my lens spanner, and then I can remove the front element and clean it off. All right. I used to have a suction cup tool for uh, putting these lens elements in and out, but my daughter found it and uh, lost it, so I'll probably turn up one of these days when uh, when I don't when I when I've completely forgotten about it or when I've bought another one. All right, so uh, that's turning freely. Okay. Film speed selector is working. Take the baffle. Uh, when you're putting it in the light meter baffle, this uh, foil side should face upward. Uh, there's a rectangular slot on this side and a long slot on the bottom. The rectangular slot fits around this brass pin here, so just drop it on like so. Excuse me, I've got that backwards. I should know better. I'm thinking about cannonet. Okay. Excuse me again. I had it right the first time. It's been a long day. All right. So that's in the right place. Then we reattach the nameplate. Make sure that the top, the window is the 12 o'clock position. If it's off a little bit, just turn it a little bit until it kind of seats down. Go ahead and put some uh, lighter fluid on the retaining ring here and turn it like so. Okay, and then I want this to be kind of snug, so I'll go ahead and tighten it down with the lens spanner. Okay, all right, so uh, uh, the viewfinder, rangefinder is nice and clean and clear. The lens is nice and clean and clear on the inside and outside. Uh, the last step to this repair will be uh, replacing the light seals. So we'll go ahead and do that in just a minute. Okay, so uh, some light seals have magically appeared here. Uh, replacing light seals, uh, I need just a, a few things. You need light seal material here, which is cut to more or less the right size. Uh, a slotted screwdriver with the sharp point and some uh, lacquer thinner. Uh, I tend to use a syringe like this one for uh, putting in the lacquer thinner. Uh, you can also just use a, a cotton swab. Just wet the cotton swab with the lacquer thinner and let it seep onto the old light seals. Okay, so uh, the light seals on these cameras, uh, there are three uh, no, excuse me, four light seals. There's a big one which goes on the hinge right across here. Uh, there are two, uh, one on the top and one on the bottom, which go the entire length of the door. And then there's one here uh, on the end of the camera. This isn't actually a light seal. This is just something which they put in to uh, uh, stop the camera door from rattling. 
the early Electro 35s didn't have any light seal material here and it, it did cause the camera to rattle a little bit so when the GS and later series came out they added uh, uh, foam rubber on this side here. So uh, what I'll do is I will uh, go ahead and put in a lacquer thinner like so. You don't need a lot of lacquer thinner for this job. Uh, you can buy a small bottle of like testers uh, lacquer thinner, the kind of stuff that they use for uh, model airplanes, you know, painting model airplanes or model cars. Uh, you can get it for a couple of dollars or less. An odd thing about these cameras and the light seals is the uh, original ones have a gap right here. They didn't go all the way uh, to the end. I don't know why Ashika did that. They didn't leap. Uh, allow light to leak through or anything like that. But when I replace the seals, I, I run them all the way up to the end. Uh, on occasion, I, I come across new examples of these cameras. A good thing about being here in Japan is that uh, uh, they have uh, lots and lots of stores and shops all around the country in places which aren't very heavily populated now. And a lot of these stores and shops, you'll find stuff that's been you know, sitting on their shelves for 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years. And uh, a couple of times I, I've gone uh, to out to the suburbs or uh, outside Tokyo and gone shopping and found a brand new in the box Yashica GX camera uh, in a camera shop. So yeah, it, it's quite interesting. Uh, old bicycles, things like that. Uh, you'd be surprised what you can find here. So uh, it, it's a great place if you like to collect these kind of things. Uh, I let the... Uh, 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 excuse me, lacquer thinner, uh, soak into the light seal material uh, for a few minutes and to try to soften the glue underneath. And uh, depending on how dry it is or the condition it is, uh, it can take a few minutes or it can take 10 minutes or 20 minutes. There isn't much left of these. Most of it is kind of dry rotted and, and fallen away. And there's just a little bit left here. If it's one of those cameras that has the squishy and sticky light seals, just a couple of minutes you know, to soak all the way through. And uh, you know, that's all you need to do. Uh, underneath my uh, work table here, I have a trash bin. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, scrape out this material here. Uh, when you are going to uh, clean out the light seal material, I, I don't recommend trying to scrape out the dry stuff first and then using the you know, cleaning out with thinner afterwards. I like to leave the light seals in when I put in the thinner because it kind of holds it in and allows the lacquer thinner to penetrate into the glue. If you try to remove the uh, light seal first and just leave like a the thin glue and debris underneath, uh, the the thinner can kind of evaporate uh, rather quickly, um, and so quickly that uh, it doesn't have a chance to uh, penetrate in and and clean everything out. Uh, this is a messy job, and this is one of the jobs in camera repair that I don't really like doing. It's not so bad on uh, a small camera like this, but like when I'm replacing the light seals on a, a film back for a, a medium format camera or whatever, that's kind of a, uh, an ordeal sometimes. It's, it's messy and it takes a while and uh, not a lot of fun. Okay, so I've managed to get most of it out and what I'll do, I keep a supply of old cotton swabs which I've used uh, for cleaning glass and what I'll do is I will apply a little uh, lacquer thinner there and you can see it wiping out all this crud and stuff from the inside. You want a nice clean surface for the uh, new light seals so they don't come loose or whatever. It's not often that they come loose, but uh, still they can. Uh, sometimes the light seals, you, you put them in and you close the film door and then you open it again and they, uh, they lift out. Uh, they, they stick somewhere where they shouldn't stick. So if everything is properly clean and um, uh, you put the light seals in, uh, they should stay put.
And to get in the channels, I'll squish the tips of the cotton swab flat like this. And that way I can get into the tighter places like so. This old saying, kind of cleanliness is next to godliness. That's especially true when you're working on cameras or watches or precision machines. Keep everything nice and clean. All right, and okay, so I've gone ahead and cleaned out everything and uh, blown out the debris and got it dry. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, install the light seals now, and not difficult to install them. I use this light seal material which I buy from uh, an Aki Asahi camera uh, leather company uh, or I get it from Japan Hobby Tool. Uh, they have it here as well. The first seal I do is I, I do the one for the hinge and I measure that by just putting it across here and pressing like so and then I cut at the crease And then I'll use a fine screwdriver to peel off the paper and to hold it in place. Okay. All right. And then I'll do the ones for the channels. I prefer the stuff which uh, Jap Japan Hobby Tool makes. It uh, works better and it's black and not gray, not that that makes any difference. The, the idea is just to keep the uh, keep the light out and also to keep the dust out. Uh, the GX is one of the easier cameras to replace the light seals in because you don't have to put the light seals in the like skinny channels here. Uh, the light seals go on the film door which and it's a lot wider and a lot easier to reach. just cut the light seal with my side cutters here. The bottom one is a little difficult because there's a little corner you have to push the light seal around. Go ahead and do the other one. And then cut it like so. And then the last one I want to do is for the uh, film door. And I'll just use the excess from the one that I just cut. And I'll just Okay, and the light seal is installed. That's pretty much all there is to that. 
All right, so uh, this camera does still need a little bit of a uh, cleanup on the outside. It's still a little bit dirty, but uh, the lens is clean and clear now. The rangefinder viewfinder is clean and clear now. It has new light seals installed and is ready to use. All I have to do is just pop the batteries in it and start to uh, put some film in it and go take photos. Anyway, uh, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, now that uh, we are back from our New Year's travel, I plan to be making more videos about cameras and camera repair. Uh, if you'd like to see these videos, uh, please subscribe. Uh, if you're interested in purchasing a vintage Japanese camera, I sell these in my Etsy and eBay stores and my new online store, japanvintagecamera.com. I'll post links to my stores in the description below the video. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and I hope you tune in again soon.